to my channel. I have Jade in here. Yeah. And Philly's over here. And the guns. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> Let's be honest. Okay, so today I've been getting a lot of messages. Jay actually has been getting some messages too about what we exactly did to get pregnant. So I guess like a step-by-step. -step I guess. We're guessing that this is what you guys wanted. Yeah. Because we um, got a lot of questions about it, so. Yeah. So, in our previous video, we kind of touched on that we did three um, cycles with three different donors, kind of in three different ways. So we mm -hmm. went with the sperm bank, and we did an at-home IUI mm -hmm. with the with a syringe and then a catheter attached to it. And then that didn't work. We only had one vial, and we inseminated 12 hours ish after I got my um, surge. Yeah, my LH surge, which again we tracked with this and the app. Everything again will be linked in the description. See here something. Um, yes, I will link everything in the description that you see here today. So that was that first cycle. Um, we can touch on that one, but I think it's just more important to pretty much tell you guys like what how we got pregnant, got pregnant like, with this last cycle. Right. So that's pretty much what we're going to touch on. But we'll touch on what didn't, what we think didn't work in those last cycles, and then what worked in this one. Yeah. So. I was tracking, like I said, with my ovulation. <clears throat> I tracked one month before we started the first cycle, and then I tracked throughout each of the other cycles as well. Um, obviously, because you know, it didn't work, so once I got my period, I just tracked from then on. So, in August was when we got pregnant, yep. and that was our third cycle. So, Okay, <laughs> so August of 2020. Yes, of 2020. Got it right. Um, Pregnancy brain. I had my period from the 6th to the 10th, and I used my Flow app, which again, I'll, well, I can't really link that, but I'll put it in the description. It's literally just the Flow app. Yeah. If you have iPhone, I don't know if it's on Android, probably. Probably. But yeah, it's called Flow, F L O W. So, and I've been tracking my periods for years as like well, years. using that app. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, I had my period from the 6th to the 10th, and then I was tracking from the 15th all the way to, I tracked until the 24th, just to make sure, like, you know, we were on target or whatever. Mm -hmm. So... <clears throat> With me tracking months before, I kind of knew which day was going to be my peak day, which is, it tends to fall on either the 14th day cycle or the 15th was when I was getting the positive on the strips. So going into that, that's how we kind of planned with our donor when he was going to come. So again, my period was the 6th to the 10th, and then my ovulation week was very accurate on this app was from the 16th my window was from the 16th august 16th to the 22nd that was my ovulation window but again i didn't get my positive opk until the 20th that's all i gotta say about that <laughs> <laughs> okay so knowing that um that was going to be my um fertile week we had him come Monday, August 17th, and I'll have this on the screen so you guys can kind of follow along. So the 17th, and as you can see on the picture, there's a heart, which in here, it just, it's for like sex. Um, <laughs> but obviously that was just <clears throat> a, donation, a day. donation day. So I had him come that day just to cover the full window. Yeah, oh, just in case. You did. I ovulated, ovulated early. early. So I had him come Monday. He came. I mean, the times really didn't matter no. in that case, but he came early that day. Yeah. The other days were, were later. So he came early that day. We did it. I knew that that wasn't going to be like 
the one, possibly, because fresh sperm can stay in your um, vagina area. Um, I think up to three to five days, isn't it? I think it can be up to a week, if I'm not mistaken, oh. at the right temperatures. Like yeah. you have to do some research on it. You have to you have to be ovulating. So, <clears throat> I mean, that could have been the day. It, it could have been. We don't know. But we wanted to cover the whole window. So, know your ovulation window. Mine was a week. Yours may be shorter. Again, there are people on here that have PCOS. Speak with your doctor. Maybe you can get your, your cycles regulated and then, you know, go from there. So, we had him come that Monday. Then we skipped a day. Mm -hmm. So, we skipped the 18th. And then he came the 19th, the 20th, and the 21st. Again, I got my positive on the 20th, so that would mean the 21st, which is circled on here, would be my ovulation day. Predicted, which I think it was. I think so, too. <laughs> um, it's 12 to 48 hours after you get your positive on the OPK strips. So that day, um, or those days leading up, he came. We did the donations. But... On the 20th and the 21st, I did something different than I did on the 17th and the 19th. So the 17th and the 19th, actually the 19th, I don't even think you were there. I don't think you were there for one of them. I was. Well, maybe it was the 17th. I, think I had to 17th. do it on my own. Mm, never again. <laughs> um, one of those days. Yeah, one day I was not there and I was very upset about it, but. Yeah. So pretty okay. much how things happened. So he came to our apartment. We met him beforehand. Well beforehand. And we yeah. had talked. We had FaceTimes. Yeah. Um, so we had been chatting for a while before mm -hmm. we gave him our address. To, like, Not a very long time. Because obviously, like we said, we had three different donors. Yeah. So. Um, but enough to get his background and all that stuff. Um, okay. So he came. I'm just going to talk about the three days in a row. He came after work. Mm -hmm. Or whatever. <clears throat> so around 5 p.m all those days so pretty much how we did it he came in we left we took philly on a walk and stuff and then we actually had my heating pad set up on the bathroom counter and then i put a towel on top of it i put it all the way on high yeah put a towel on top of it and then i i, I did put a washcloth around around it yeah as so well the donation cup so yeah donation cup with a towel around it sitting on a towel on top of the heating pad to keep it warm, warm. Mm -hmm. um granted we were coming right back like it's not yeah. like we left or anything and you know i just always read you know you want to keep it as warm as possible yeah so so then it was my turn <clears throat> it was my time to shine so she went in the bedroom and got ready you know stripped down whatever <laughs> um were, were you were your, like, were your hips elevated? Yeah, so yeah. I laid down on the bed with my hips under a pillow. So I was literally laying like this. With a moon pillow. Waiting with a pillow underneath. Yeah. So I was elevated. So while she was doing that, I was in the bathroom actually drawing up the donation. Um, she couldn't stomach it. I it was fine. <laughs> so literally just... Stick the syringe down in there. You're gonna pull up, you know, on the back of it. Do it slowly to draw it in. Then once you get it in, try to push out the bubbles, any bubbles that yeah. you know pop up in there. Which we didn't get um, many because we actually had pretty good sized donations. Yeah. Other thing I want to say before we continue, we, we four of these, right? Yes. So these are one milliliter syringes. I will leave them in the link below. We got them from Amazon. We got these from Amazon. They have big packs which we thought we were going to continue to keep trying, but we got pregnant, so we, don't, we didn't need these. Um, so, yeah, we probably drew, drew up three or four Three of those. or four, yeah. So I literally just drew them up, you know, one by one. And then put them in the cup. And put them in the cup. And then I walked into the bedroom. There she was. So then... There okay, she so was. <laughs> it's drawn back. So basically, you're, you know, going to make sure, you know, you hold... Her. <laughs> I don't know how visual you guys want this to be, but so basically you're gonna go ahead, you're gonna insert it in like slowly and insert it in as far as you can go, and then you're going to Plunge. push push the plunger slowly and like 
literally just let it ease in there. Once it's completely emptied, I let it sit there for about two to three seconds, maybe a little bit more, maybe five seconds, mm -hmm. and then slowly draw it back out, exchange it for the next one, and continue it until you were done yeah. with all the syringes. This is a very easy process. Very, very easy. fast. Um, I that was say, the visual. I'm sorry. I will say on the, you guys asked for it, so. <laughs> right. Um, on the last one, you did leave it in a little bit longer. Yeah. Yeah. So the last, the very last one happy. of the syringes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then you sat in bed with your hips literally like laid. I laid up against our headboard with like her butt and yeah. her legs oh, straight up. Like this. Okay, I'm pregnant, guys. So I doubt she can even. <laughs> get I was literally like this. So I had two pillows under. This is not comfortable. Um, two pillows under, and then my legs were up on the headboard. Yeah. Okay. okay. Oh. Nice and slow. Jesus. <laughs> okay. Oh, you guys gonna love this video. Seriously. <laughs> okay, so I did that. I stayed there for about an hour. I thought no longer than that. I stayed like that for an hour and then I took a nap. Yeah, she yeah, she took a nap. So I lay awake for an hour and be watching YouTube videos and stuff like that. Um, one thing I did not do, I didn't go pee. I peed right before. Right before. And oh, actually I think the first time Monday. Mm -hmm. So that Monday. I think I peed after and I was devastated because like a lot of it was like coming out. I still waited the half an hour or whatever, but that when I saw that, I was like, these next three days, I'm not peeing. Yeah, after. so literally right as we got back into the apartment, she would go to the bathroom, then go to the bedroom mm -hmm. and get prepped while I was getting everything prepped. So that way she didn't have to pee mm -hmm. right after. Yeah, so we went, I went right into the thing while he was drawing all that up. I was peeing and then getting undressed and then laying on the bed. Um, so I did try to nap with at least one of the pillows under and I wanna say I napped for maybe like an hour and a half to two hours and then after I woke up, I did go to the bathroom. I was clenching so bad trying to keep whatever I could in there, not gonna lie, in a little bit dripped out and I was kinda sad but honestly I think that was like the extra stuff yeah. Because the swimmers swim up there rather quickly. Um, so I really didn't have to lay it down for that long, but it made me feel better. Yeah. Um, and then that was pretty much it. We did that for the next three days, again, with the heating pad and that. Um, I guess I put a towel in between, though, because you don't want to, like, you don't want to burn them. You don't want to boil them. Yeah. So <laughs> once it got to temperature, so I put on high and maybe like 20 minutes before he got there, I had it on high, and then once he came, I put it on low, um, just to keep them, you know, as room temp, I mean, as body temperature as we could, yeah. just so they were extra swimmy. Yeah. Um, that was pretty much it for that cycle. I think the big difference in what got us the positive pregnancy was the timing of everything doing it three days in a row the timing and i think just i don't know i think like we just learned a lot from the previous attempts the previous cycles and like we kind of just carry those over into the next donation that actually got us the positive pregnancy yeah. honestly each sorry i have indigestion <laughs> each <laughs> each cycle we did an extra donation but this last cycle, we did two extra donations. So yeah. the first one, we bought one vial of sperm from a sperm bank. The next one, we pretty much did the same interview process with a known donor. We did it one day, skipped the day, and then did it the next day. And I think that kind of messed things up. And then, yeah. well, just the timing wasn't there. I don't know. And then this time around, I was not messing around. Yeah, we wanted to cover the full window. So if you know when your ovulation week is, like, <coughs> try to cover that entire week. Get a donation in every day or every other day just to cover the, that full week. Yeah, because if you have somebody that, that is not low on their sperm count, doing a donation, not every, I'm not saying five days a week yeah. or, yeah, five days a week, like do a donation every single day that week. But if you can do at least two in a row and then maybe one outlier somewhere, definitely do that. Yeah. Um, even though people have gotten pregnant with one vial yeah. of frozen sperm 
and they, I, you know, you just you just get lucky. I mean, it's it's definitely it's, it's a science. It's yeah. not exact, but you know, you just you, you have just to have do to everything that you yeah. can do to make it work mm -hmm. as yeah. best as possible, and hope for luck for the rest of the way. Very much. Because yeah, we honestly didn't think we were planning for the next cycle. The yeah, next we we were we were already in our head like, okay, this doesn't work. What's our game plan for next month? Mm -hmm. Which and he I was think already it, on board with mm -hmm. everything, so yeah, it, it worked out perfectly. He didn't mind that we would keep trying. Yeah. And also, in picking a donor, a known donor, I should say, because, like I said, we did do the, the cryo bank or whatever, but we didn't, we didn't really want to continue to go that route. And, fun fact, our donor that we actually used for the first donation, he is completely out of sperm. Yeah and hasn't been replenished pretty much since COVID. And so. that was our biggest concern was that. And secondly, it was the fact that with that particular bank, cryobank, um, we mostly saw baby pictures of the donors. Even and then we kind when, of changed it now. Yeah, but we when we did it, they were only baby pictures it, it's up to the donor, whatever they want to provide, what right. information they want to provide. So if they want to uh, provide a baby picture and an adult photo, they can do that. But the donor that we originally chose only used the baby picture. Mm -hmm. And then we kind of had to go based off of what the, oh, what the office... Oh, what the office staff, like their yeah, impressions. Their impressions of him were. <laughs> which they they have like celebrity lookalikes or whatever. But, you know, I get told I look like all kinds of people. And I don't think I look like those people. So how accurate were they? We really don't know. Mm -hmm. And sometimes people can look one way as a child and look completely different as an adult. So that was something that we didn't really like either about the cryobank. So that one specifically. That one like specifically. We said, yeah. There are some cryobanks where you can get a full whatever, but the one here in Florida, it's Cryos International. The specific sperm donor we chose did not have an adult picture. Yes. <clears throat> and he was an anonymous donor as well. Which we didn't we mind didn't, we didn't either mind which that. way. Even with our known donors, like if they wanted to stay anonymous after the kid, after our kid was eighteen, like yeah. we would whatever. Um, but yeah, so, but there are sperm donors on there that do have adult pictures. Yes, I I was creeping on there just to see if he had anything left, and he did it. No. Actually, the two that we chose, both of them have run out. So. So this this was they might not even be donating it right, and this was exactly what we were afraid of because of, we want more children. So we wanted to make sure that we had a donor that we could continue to use for all siblings. And we didn't have four thousand dollars to buy up what that would have been like maybe six vials maybe. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, you know, we used one and. Probably the next one we want, we probably would have wanted to use two. Right. And we only would have four left. Exactly. So. so we're happy with our choice using a known donor. We're happy we did it a home insemination. Um, Let me be involved in the process. Mm -hmm. I, I know that some, I'm not, I really don't know. I've seen it in television shows where sometimes they'll let the spouse or the partner, you know, actually push the plunger. I'm not sure if they really do that. We didn't have uh, an office experience, so I, I don't know. I have know. seen it on YouTube. Um, it was a lesbian couple. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They, yeah. they let the wife do it. But yeah. Some, some clinics don't. Some clinics don't. So that was something else that, you know, I'm really happy that this did work and we were able to do this. Mm -hmm. I could be a part of the process. Right. And we got to know our sperm donor outside of just reading a profile online. Right. Because... I actually watched a YouTube video of a horror story on a sperm donor. Oh, he yeah. had schizophrenia and he had multiple, multiple um, kid kids, donor kids. I guess you could you could say. Yeah. Um, and some of them had the same issues that he did because schizophrenia is, can be passed down. Yeah. So we did not want <clears throat> any, any of that. Any possibilities. Um, and yeah, I don't know. No. I think. That's really it. Um, Ask any questions that you guys still have. Make sure you put them down below. Um, do a Q&A. Yeah, message her on Instagram. Message me on Instagram or wherever you find us. I don't know. All of our <laughs> social media. Um, so that way we can do a and a and really just hit all of the questions if you have any more questions after this video. Yeah. In my next video, I think I'm going to do a pregnancy update because I have not done one yet. Yes. Mainly because pregnancy has just been 
crazy. We've been moving, of moving, and just all kinds of stuff yeah. just been going on. So. But um, I, I guess if this is what you wanted, then there you go. Um, yes. Yeah. So. This is your channel. You close it out. Bye. Bye. I'm just kidding. All right. Well, thanks for watching. Um, sorry if this was TMI, but again, we had a lot of people asking what our process was, and this was kind of our process. Um, we can do in a video on the other two donations. I just didn't think those were super important right now um, because they didn't work. For us. For least. us. <clears throat> but... If you want to know what we did with those, then feel free to ask. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, but thanks for watching, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye. Bye. Bye.